Welcome, uh, everybody, this afternoon in uh, East Africa. It has just gone 3 p.m. In Central Africa, it is currently 2 p.m. And if you're joining us from anywhere else in the world, uh, welcome to this short 90-minute session on Aquaculture Africa magazine about the Truefish project. Um, I'm really excited to be with you this afternoon. Many of you that are listening will know that uh, we've been running these aquaculture webinars uh, since the start of COVID uh, about ooh, probably a year and a half ago. And this afternoon, I've got the privilege of not only coordinating the session, but also presenting a project where I am involved myself, uh, which is called Truefish. Uh, Truefish consists of a large team of professionals that are working in improving aquaculture in East Africa. And uh, it's really a privilege to be bringing you this short message around the work that uh, the Truefish project is undertaking. I can see the room is filling up. Uh, I can see many chats already, people greeting the panel. So because we've only got 90 minutes this afternoon, I want to get going as soon as possible. If I can run through some of the numbers just before we start and before I introduce my panel, um, this webinar this afternoon, as you know, is brought to you by Aquaculture Africa magazine. Uh, close partners to the magazine is the African chapter of the World Aquaculture Society. I can tell you that we've had more than 300 people register for this afternoon. Many of those people will be watching the recording uh, after the session. And then of those 300 registrations, 57 of them come from countries, well, there are 57 countries represented, of which 31 countries are in the African continent. If we just have a look at Africa, uh, once again, Kenya leading the pack. Uh, we've got somewhat 23% of people listening or that have registered that have come from Kenya, followed by Egypt, Uganda, Nigeria, South Africa, Zambia, and Tanzania. 
if you have a look at the bar chart, you'll see around 75% of the audience is from Africa, but it's always nice to welcome our guests from across the world. I know there are several people from Worldfish that are listening from other countries across the world. We have people registered from Mexico, from Peru, from Malta, many people from India and Pakistan as well. So from the parts in the world. Just some arrangements before we get proceedings going. Chat panel uh, to say hello to everybody. Um, you can put a comment in the chat panel if you wish. Then use the question and answer panel for your questions. It's easier for us to follow the questions if they are in the Q&A panel, but you are welcome to greet us in the chat panel. I have taken several questions from the register and we will try our best to deal with those questions towards the end of our 90 minute webinar. Many of the questions that we have received are technical questions, um, specifically around methods of farming fish. Uh, uh, and those questions we, we will not noon, but we'll certainly try and discuss after the short presentations. This webinar today, what is in true fish? You will get an email tomorrow uh, if you've attended the webinar with a link to the recording as well as a link uh, to the presentation slides. We will the webinar. It is a discussion session. It's not a training session. So please be aware that we do not issue certificates of, of attendance to, to these sessions. And then lastly, just from an admin point of view, uh, we will be sharing the email addresses of all the speakers at the end of the session so that you can contact any of them for a follow-up discussion. Also remember that these webinars, they are run by AAM, but AAM cannot run them without sponsorship. Um, these webinars are brought to you free of cost. And the way that's done is through a contribution from three organizations, the one being Worldfish. Uh, Worldfish has a mission to reduce poverty and hunger by improving fisheries and aquaculture. And they are very active on the African continent in fact, we have one speaker today in Truefish that represents Worldfish as well. The next sponsor is Scretting. Scretting, as a global leader in aquafeed production, has a specific footprint in Africa. You can see their webpage address and please support them and look at their website to find out more about their feed provision on the African continent. The last sponsor is the World Initiative for Soy and Human Health. Um, although they promote the use of soy for human uh, consumption, they also promote the use of soy in fish feeds, which means that they play an important role in aquaculture, not only in Africa, but across the planet. So thank you to these sponsors for making this session this afternoon possible. I'd like to move on to introducing the entire panel that will be speaking this afternoon. I can ask all of the panel members to please open your cameras. Um, I'm going to ask each panel member to briefly introduce themselves. This is our program for the afternoon. It's a very full program, but I'm sure we will finish on time uh, within the allocated 90 minutes. Our first panel member this afternoon is Mr. Fuasto Perini. He is from the European Union Commission. Fuasto, can I ask you to just say two or three words about yourself and introduce yourself to all of those attending? Thank you. Thank you, Etienne. Uh, my name is Fausto Perini. I'm speaking from the youth delegation to Tanzania and the East African uh, community based in Dar es Salaam. I am a program manager and uh, in charge of EU-funded uh, regional integration programs uh, with uh, uh, the community, including the True Fish program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fuasto. The next panel member is Dr. Mahongu. 
Dr. Mohongu is the Executive Secretary of the LVFO. Dr. Mohongu, can you briefly introduce yourself? Uh, good afternoon to you all. Uh, my name is Ishigara Mohongo. I'm Executive Secretary of the Legatoria Fisheries Organization, uh, which is an institution of the East African community responsible for management of fisheries and aquaculture resources in the region. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Mohongu. Then, Doctor, I'm going to get this pronunciation right today. It's Nosha Ponayo. Uh, I know him better as Elisi. Uh, Elisi, can you introduce yourself? Thank you, uh, Etienne, and uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm uh, Elisen Zohabonayo. I'm Director of Aquaculture Management and Development at Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. I'm also a regional project coordinator of this project, True Fish. Thank you, Etienne. You are welcome. Thank you very, thank you very much, Elisi. Um, then, Mr. Jose Brajau. Jose, if you can introduce yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Etienne. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. My name is Jose, Jose Parajua. I'm fishery officer at FAO. And it has been assigned to be the chief technical advisor for the True Fish project. We are based in Jinja, uh, where we are working in close collaboration with the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Jose. Then, uh, Dr. Papias. Tipahika, um, Papias, if you can briefly introduce yourself, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Tien, for coordinating and organizing this important session. Uh, my name is Papias Deas Tipahika. Uh, under True Fish Project, I work uh, uh, with World Fish as uh, the biodiversity advisor. And we are all based at uh, LVFO which is Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization in Jinja. Thank you. Great. Uh, thank you very much, Papias, for that introduction. Um, I'm not sure I see, uh, I'm just checking if everybody is online. Um, Dr. Anthony Tabu Manyoyo, uh, you are the last to introduce yourself. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Etienne. My name is Anthony Tabu Munyaho. I am Deputy Executive Secretary at the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, and uh, my position also puts me at one of the people who actually implement this project and also at the first level of supervision of the project. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor. Nice to have you all online. Um, I see everybody is very smartly dressed for the webinar this afternoon and ready to share information. You can see the program on your screen. Um, I'm going to kick off with this program, and first up, we will allow uh, Fuasto from the European Union Commission to say a little bit about where Truefish started and, and where it comes from. Um, Fuasto, it's over. The floor is over to you. Thank you, Etienne. I, I will be very short. Let me start by saying that a few years ago, the EU headquarters had allocated 10 million euro uh, to be programmed by the EU delegation in Tanzania and the Eastern African Community Secretariat in order to improve natural resource management around the Lake Victoria Basin, a basin which has also a huge socioeconomic and political importance for, for all of Africa. Seeing the growing importance uh, and the potential for aquaculture in the region and the Lake Victoria Basin in particular, it was a natural choice uh, to develop a program on aquaculture. And this was done together with the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. Our approach was to concentrate not in doing what the private sector can do best, that is growing aquaculture through lucrative and sustainable ventures, but on some crucial constraints and risks associated with the growth of a competitive commercial aquaculture. The key constraints we are focusing on are limited access to commercial networks, mainly for inputs and services, and limited access to professionally skilled staff. The risks we focus on are associated with, the, uh, with fish diseases, protection of biodiversity, and fish farms uncontrolled spatial distribution in the Lake Victoria. To conclude, let me just mention that this program fits well with one of the key overarching priorities of the EU, both uh, for the EU itself and in the framework of its international partnerships. It is the European, the so-called European Green Deal, which is our 
our uh, European new growth policy based on sustainability. In particular, Truefish supports the EU approach for a sustainable blue economy, which aims in Teralia to make the economy more circular, preserve biodiversity, while benefiting the water basins economy. Let me thank you all for your presence and I hope you enjoy the coming presentations. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fuasto, for that introduction. Um, I can say that Fuasto is, is an anchor man in this project, and uh, we look forward to the next few years uh, of bringing this project uh, to you. And if it was not for the European Union, uh, this project would not have been possible. I can see from the chat panel, we've got several people from the Philippines that have joined us. Welcome to everybody from the Philippines. It's really nice to have a global audience. I'd like to introduce, what well, not introduce, I'd like to put to the word uh, Dr. Mahongu once again as the Executive Secretary from the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. Dr. Mohongu, if you could say a few words of welcome on behalf of the LVFO. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Etienne. Uh, uh, good afternoon to you all once again. Uh, today marks a special day uh, for LBFO as we gear up to witness the changing face of aquaculture in East Africa through the True Fish Project. Uh, the project is financed by the EU Commission under the indicated program at a tune of uh, 10.15 million euros. Uh, of course, EDF is contributing 10 million euros and while the remainder is co-financed by partner uh, the, uh, potential grant beneficiaries. Uh, as you know, the crisis caused by the COVID pandemic, which led to countries imposing different forms of restrictions has somehow affected the implementation of this project. But nonetheless, we are happy that technology has enabled us to meet virtually and increase awareness of the project to our stakeholders and potential investors. Uh, of course, uh, the project is to change the face of aquaculture in East Africa uh, by addressing the impediments to growth in the sector that are faced by investors. This includes lack of technical skilled operators, lack of investment finance and business planning, incomplete uh, networks or representation, and the threats which undermine the sustainability of aquaculture development all those which could impact negatively on the environment and on food security and livelihoods. Uh, with this context in mind, uh, the primary objective of this webinar today, of course, is to introduce to you the various components of this troop fish project, the expected results, and to hear your views on how best this project could be implemented in order to change the face of aquaculture in East Africa. Uh, the project is, is being implemented first of all by F uh, by what fish and also Latin Miss, where ATNs come from, uh, who are working to, in cross, cross collaboration with Lake Victoria a Fishers Organization. Uh, the project's primary goal is to contribute to the develop, development of a competitive, gender equitable, and sustainable commercial aquaculture in Lake Victoria Basin. Um, the accrued benefits from this project will target the Lake Victoria, Liparian countries of Uganda, Kenya, and Tanzania. But Burundi and Rwanda will also benefit in terms of aquatic animal health related interventions. It is therefore my sincere hope that this project will benefit fish farmers in addressing all those challenges and thus contribute to food and nutrition security and create employment opportunities, especially to the youth and women in this region. In conclusion, uh, therefore, please allow me to thank the Aquaculture Africa magazine, uh, London Miss, uh, including NTNs, of course, and other partners organizing this platform and therefore creating awareness of the project. And this shows the interest and commitment to the project to achieve the in its intended results. Uh, let, me, let me take this opportunity to thank all of the participants to this uh, uh, webinar for taking time out of their very busy schedules to attend this event. Uh, of course, I shall be attending another meeting uh, in a few minutes, and therefore, apologies as we will not be available to the end of this session. I thank you for your kind attention, and welcome to this webinar. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Mohongu, for those words of welcome. I know you are very busy and running to another meeting, but we are honored that you've made time for us all the way from Arusha in uh, Tanzania. 
So uh, thank you very much for that support. Thank you. I'd like to move on in the program. Um, our first uh, short presentation will come from Dr. Ellisi. Uh, Dr. Ellisi is the, the lead, uh, is, is the lead uh, manager in the project, and he will be providing an overview of the structure of the Truefish project. Um, Elsie, can I ask you to share your screen and uh, the floor is yours to tell us all about what Truefish uh, entails. Thank you, Elsie. Thank you, Etienne, and uh, uh, good afternoon again, uh, everyone. Uh, I'm going to, to share with you uh, the overview uh, and the structure of the EU ESC farming story in the Lake Victoria uh, Basin, Bluefish. Uh, uh, as a reminder, I'm Elise Zoabonayo. I'm the regional project coordinator of this uh, Truefish uh, project. As a background on the status of aquaculture in the ESC, uh, the total production is estimated 241,000 uh, metric ton with Uganda contributing about 85%. Uh, the captured species uh, in the region are mainly uh, tilapia and the catfish, and the uh, catcher system are mainly uh, Ethan Pond and the more recently cages. Uh, per capita fish consumption is estimated in the region at seven uh, kilograms per year, which is less than uh, the average of for Africa, uh, 80.5 kilograms and they vary between uh, 1.5 kilogram in Rwanda and the 12 kilogram uh, in Uganda, which is on the higher side. The average consumption is about 35% uh, uh, of the global average, which is 20 kilogram per, uh, per year. Uh, aquaculture in the region is facing uh, several challenges, which prevent the growth of competitive commercial aquaculture in the region and the many constraints are uh, limited access to finance and the commercial networks, inadequate quality fish feed and seed, lack of skilled operators, lack of coalesce policy uh, which prevent the, inv in the investment in, in the commercial aquaculture, the limited uh, improve the strain, managing risk associated with fish disease and the protection of biodiversity. Uh, the European Union and the, EA and the East African community signed a financing agreement uh, and secure a, a project called the True Fish at amount of 10.15 million over five years. The project uh, will target the riparian country of Lake Victoria, Uganda, Tanzania, and the Kenya, but also Burundi and the Rwanda will benefit in terms of aquatic animal health. The True Fish Project aims to remove key uh, impediments such as access to commercial network, availability of skilled workers, and the enhanced sustainability and the biodiversity. The major objective of the project is to contribute towards the development of competitive, gender equitable and sustainable commercial aquaculture in order to, to improve the economic development and the sustainable management of natural resources in the Lake Victoria Basin. Specifically, the project has three major components. The first component on business is to improve access to commercial network for aquaculture related business, which is being implemented by Lander Mir, who, who is organizing uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, the second component is on the skill to increase availability of quality skilled workers for the development of aquaculture related business. And this, component is being implemented by Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Uh, the third co component on sustainability to improve sustainability and the biosecurity of regional aquaculture production system. Uh, this one is implemented by uh, FAO and the World Fish. 
FAO is implementing the three, uh, the, the two uh, first uh, result. The first one is on uh, Lake Victoria zoning, and the, the second one is on the aquatic animal health. While wild fish is implementing uh, uh, the result uh, on the uh, on the protection of uh, biodiversity. On the, on the governance and the organization setup of the project, the project was launched in May 2021 and it will be implemented for a period of five years. As the governance and the organization of, of the project, the project is, a, is governed by four arms. The first one is a project steering committee, which is composed by uh, the ESC uh, uh, partner state. Uh, the donor, which is the EU delegation, and the uh, Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, as well as Aquaculture Associations. The second is the technical committee, which is composed by the EU delegation and the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization, as well as the implementers. The third, uh, the third arm is a project coordination unit, and this one is composed by the, the coordinator and the uh, implementers, as well as Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. And uh, finally, the national focal point uh, uh, are, supporting, are supporting country level uh, coordination of the project. Uh, this is the uh, overview. Uh, the overview, I hope that uh, uh, in the following uh, presentation, the implementers will go deeper and explain more about each component. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, LSE, for that overview of Truefish. Um, many of the people in our audience have not heard about Truefish, and I'm sure they have a better understanding uh, where the project comes from and uh, what the main objectives of the project are. If you have questions, please post in the Q&A panel. Um, I can see many people introducing themselves in the chat panel. Uh, it's really nice to have many of you join us. And I hope that you are having an opportunity to learn more about the True Fish Project. As you've just heard from uh, Dr. Ellisi, the project is split into three subcomponents. I am very proud to be uh, running component one, which is the advancement of business in aquaculture in East Africa. I am going to present for a few minutes just to give you an idea what component one is all about. First, three subcomponents, and they are number one to establish and host an East African aquaculture exhibition and conference. Number two, to facilitate an investment into the aquaculture sector. And number three, to support regional aquaculture associations, specifically to create more effective business to business linkage and to develop study tour programs for these respective associations. If I just spend a minute or two on each of these subcomponents, firstly, the culture exhibition, and we assisted the World Aquaculture Society East African region with their first online conference last year. I can see many names that attended that event, and uh, we learned a lot of lessons. Uh, we are in COVID, so uh, online conferences. Uh, are currently commonplace, but it does take away the opportunity to meet physically. And we hope that meeting physically going forward into the coming year uh, will be the mode of conferencing as we progress in the project. We are currently busy planning a next conference in Kenya later in this year. Uh, also in cooperation with the East African region of the World Aquaculture Society. Then we hope to move on to Tanzania in 2023 and back into Uganda in 2024. <clears throat> and then very importantly, we want to end off the project with a big world conference that we've called 
the East African Aquaculture Safari in 2025. We are currently finalizing the bid process for that conference. And if we are successful with that bid, we are aiming to have that conference in East Africa in May of 2025. Then facilitating the increased flow of investment. Uh, there are various subtasks to this component. First and foremost, this year, we are working on a business directory where information about the sector will be freely available to everybody. Information about producers, goods, service providers, feed, seed, finance, health management, regulations, and associations. Then we are in the process of developing a business case for fish farming in East Africa so that any party across the world can pick up the business case and get information around the detail of the viability in fish farming in this region. Then thirdly, we have embarked on interaction with various global investors so that we can spark the interest of global investors for aquaculture in Eastern Africa. Around supporting of the regional aquaculture associations, we have four recognized associations in East Africa. We have already arranged a first study tour that will be taking eight representatives from these associations to Egypt within the next month. Um, those representatives will be attending the AFRAC 2022 conference. We will be visiting the EU funded HortiMed project as well as the Central Laboratory for Aquaculture Research and the World Fish Center in the Abassa. Not only will these participants be visiting these facilities, but we'll be using the study tour to plan the rest of the events coming up as the conferences in the remainder of the project. Future study tours will include countries such as Nigeria and possibly Vietnam and China in the coming years. We are also lining up business to business training sessions, one in each of the Lake Victoria bordering countries, which is Kenya, Tanzania, and Uganda. And this will be taking place later in 2022 as physical events uh, in these various uh, countries. In these events and following these events will be various business to business linkages that will be set up not only through mentorship but also through direct involvement of potential investors and other companies that are interested in development of the aquaculture sector. So that is the summary of what component one in Truefish uh, will look like. Uh, I look forward to talking to anybody that's online today and that's listening to this message. If you would like to get involved in any of these initiatives, please reach out. My email address will be at the end. And uh, I look forward to fruitful discussions and deliberations. I will now hand over to Mr. Jose, uh, who will be dealing with component two and part of component three of Truefish. Uh, Jose, if I can ask you to open up your screen and uh, I will hand the floor over to you. Thank you very much. Jose, I can see your screen, but you are still muted. Yeah, sorry. Um, uh, can you hear me now, Tim? Perfect. Uh, thank you, Jose. We can hear you. You can uh, go into presentation mode, and the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Tim. So now we are going to move to the uh, uh, working packages that FAO is implementing in, uh, in Truefish. And... Uh, FAO is uh, implementing three working areas. Uh, we are working in skills, which is related to aquaculture training. Uh, here, with, uh, our specific objective is to increase the availability of skilled workers for the aquaculture business, for the operators in the Lake Victoria. The second area that FAO is implementing is aquatic animal health, which is related clearly to aquaculture biosecurity. Uh, our specific objective objective here is to mitigate the risk uh, associated with the aquatic animal health. 
And the last one is zoning, which is uh, aquaculture and spatial planning. And here, what we would like is to develop a sustainable cage culture and its related management system. Let's go very quickly to uh, a little bit more of information of each of these uh, three areas. Uh, in relation with training, TUFIS collaborates with uh, three technical and vocational education and training institutions. Uh, in the, uh, but also, we are collaborating with the Lake Victoria aquaculture operators with the objectives of aligning the aquaculture training offer and the demand. The participating uh, institutions are the Ramoji Institute of Advanced Technology, RIAD, in Kisumu, Kenya. The Fisheries Training Institute, FTI, in Entebbe, Uganda, and the Fisheries and Education Training Agency, FETA, in Njegesi, Tanzania. The expected result for this working area is that these uh, TVTs uh, finally will offer the kind of skilled workers demanded by aquaculture operators, but also we are looking for those operators hiring these skilled workers that are going to be delivered. Uh, or trained by the three institutions. What Jose, we are doing... Jose, yeah. sorry, Etienne. Um, I see some people are asking if it's possible for you to go into presentation mode. I will try. That's, that's perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Jose. Okay. Uh, so uh, let me go to the next one. Let's see uh, what uh, TRUFIS uh, FAO is specifically doing on their uh, training and our, under our skill working area. We are assessing the training needs of both the uh, technical institutions, but also the aquaculture sector, the, the needs of the operators in the lake regarding training. We are upgrading contents of the regular courses, but also we are incorporating new specific soil courses that are going to be delivered by these uh, TVTs. We are supporting the three participating institutions in delivering the new contents. We are enhancing the technical capacity of the teachers and the staff uh, that are working in these institutions in order to deliver uh, the training accordingly with the updated contents. We are trying to modernize the uh, training facilities of these institutions by procuring, delivering, and installing new equipment, which is going to allow them to deliver this upgraded uh, training level. And we are reinforcing the regional collaboration of the three activities by finding uh, potential specializations uh, in the different countries around the, around the lake. And then our working area related to aquatic animal health, related to biosecurity, TRUFIS collaborates with the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization and with the competent national authorities for mitigating the risk related to the spreading of aquatic animal disease, um, how this risk is affecting to the further development of the aquaculture in the region. Here we are participating with uh, five uh, East Africa uh, countries, uh, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Burundi, and Rwanda. And the result that we are expected by implementing this working area is that the biosecurity capacity and the status of the biosecurity is going to be increased in all the region, in the Lake uh, Victoria Basin. What we are doing uh, in order to, to uh, reach uh, this uh, objective we are assessing the national and the regional uh, aquatic animal health statutes, identifying the gaps and the needs according to the FAO aquaculture biosecurity standards. We are supporting the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization on drafting a regional aquatic animal health strategy and its implementation plan. We are establishing an aquatic animal health working group at the Bay, and it, this working group is based in the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization. We are supporting uh, the participating countries in reinforcing their own national existing aquatic animal health strategies and their working plans. We are reinforcing the technical capacity of the national respons responsible bodies in what relates to biosecurity control in the lake. We are designing and conducting pilots of uh, field surveys, surveys for reinforcing the field level capacity in aquatic animal health in order to monitor and surveillance uh, spreading of the disease. So basically we are implementing early detection and warning systems. 
training uh, aquaculture operators also in early detection and controlling uh, the disease for reducing biosecurity risks. And finally, we are supporting the national authorities and also the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization in preparing, preparing and facilitating the adoption of aquatic animal health related regulation models. In the last area that we are working on in, in uh, aquaculture special planning, two fish collaborates with the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization and the National Fisheries and Aquaculture Authorities for establishing a zoning system which is going to enable the sustainable development for the aquaculture in the Lake Victoria Basin. Here we are fully participating with the three riparian countries, Kenya, Uganda, and Tanzania, but also Burundi is participating in part of the activities in order to get reinforced its technical capacity in zoning. The expected result here is that the cage, uh, to develop a cage culture sustainable management plan for the entire region based on the aquaculture sp uh, spatial planning approach that FAO is implementing. What we are doing here, we are reviewing the regional and the national priorities for aquaculture. We are analyze, analyzing the socioeconomic context regarding the development of the cage culture at the basin level. We are conducting surveys for detecting available spatial data on the Lake Victoria. We are obtaining the pertinent geospatial data and using them in modeling. We are establishing a zoning working group. Uh, it's again based at the Lake Victoria Physics Organization. We are establishing a spatial information system at the Lake Victoria Physics Organization for monitoring, for further monitoring the cage culture development. We are training the concerned stakeholders on aquaculture and spatial planning in all the countries. We are going to prepare a large scale spatial model for the development of the cage culture in the Lake Victoria. We are identifying what are the aquaculture zones and we are going to estimate their carrying capacity. We would like also to establish monitoring system for specific pilot aquaculture zones out of those that are going to be identified for development of aquaculture. We are planning a regional level management plan for the development of the aquaculture. Finally, we are expecting that this plan is going to get validated by developing a wide dissemination program around the lake. And this is uh, all from my side, and this is a summary of what FAO is doing implementing the, the uh, Trophies project. Thank you, Etienne. Over to you. Thank you very much. Uh, back of component number two. Come to about the animal health, and I'm sure, sure, Jose, we will be dealing with those questions um, at the end of the presentation. We have run for about 40 minutes. We have about uh, 45 minutes or so left, um, and I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Papias uh, Tabihika once again. He is um papius i can see your screen if you can go into presentation mode and uh, the floor is yours papius thank you very much uh papius you might still be on mute yeah um we're doing this uh just a moment okay I hope you can hear me. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Papius. We can hear you now. Okay, let me put my... Uh... Okay, so uh, I put the video. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, the organizer, uh, Mr. Tien, uh, the previous uh, speakers, implementers, and you, the audience. Uh, this is uh, a special day, like one of the uh, speakers said, and I'm thrilled actually to present the work uh, World Fish is implementing and a true fish project. My name once again is Papias, and I work for World Fish as biodiversity advisor. And I work closely with Professor John Benzi, who is the project uh, component director. Okay. 
So uh, under True Fish Project, what the fish is implementing uh, is at area 3.3, which is to do with um, uh, improved protection of fish biodiversity. And it's okay, like here, something is wrong. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. Can you hear me, please? Uh, yes, uh, Papias, we can hear you clearly, 100%. Okay, so uh, what the fish is implementing uh, result area 3.3 uh, under true fish uh, project. Uh, this is to do with improved protection of biodiversity. Uh, this result area aims to establish a system and build capacity for evaluating and monitoring the biodiversity of key species used for aquaculture and undertake an initial assessment, thus providing the foundation and direction for future sustainable aquaculture development in East Africa. So under True Fish Project, uh, I'm just going to uh, expose to you the expected uh, outputs under which we anticipate to generate uh, during the project progress. And uh, the expected outputs under this result area, uh, one, uh, LVF or regional working group established <coughs> that will deliver advice on genetics and biodiversity in aquaculture and fisheries. Two, aquaculture and wild locations mapped showing the distribution of native and exotic uh, genotypes based on molecular genetic, genotypic tools. And this will be useful to assess the main risks to biodiversity that potentially arise from aquaculture practices and the measures which could be adopted to manage, uh, to manage the impacts. Um, So this uh, output, this second output, we broadly result into the preservation of genetic diversity and integrity of threatened or endangered uh, species, both in the captivity and in the wild. Two, how to use hatcheries in order to supplement wild populations. And three, how to minimize inbreeding and adaptation to captivity. The third output is science-based policy recommendations um, and model natu national policies, regulations, and guidelines for biodiversity presented for adoption at regional level. The fourth output is capacity built uh, to the number of fisheries, aquaculture, and environmental officers as well as private hatchery owners on the methods and technologies for hatchery and biodiversity management and conservation. This is all I, need, I have I had for you this afternoon. Thank you for listening. Great, uh, thank you very much uh, Papias for that summary of the component that has been dealt with um, I want to thank uh, all of the presenters so far. <coughs> you've um, you've kept well within time and uh, been able to clearly uh, illustrate and to use this opportunity for us to now deal with with some of the questions. Uh, not only in some of the questions that were sent to us. Uh, before the before the webinar as well, I can see some of the panel members have also been assisting with answering questions in the Q and A panel. Please feel free to keep putting your questions uh, up for for answer.
And uh, I can also see there are one or two. To handle. Um, I want to firstly deal with Upare, the question in the Q&A panel. It was asked uh, how credit can be provided to fish farmers in the project. Um, Maroti, I'd, I'd like to answer that question. It's important that we um, that, that we explain that Truefish itself is not a credit provider to aquaculture, but Truefish will create an environment where credit can be more easily accessed. So we are working with various financial institutions to provide them with the required information that they need to build more confidence in providing credit to the aquaculture industry. Um, if you've worked with applying for credit for aquaculture, you will realize that it's a difficult process because the information that financial institutions require is often absent. And we are working on providing that information so that financial institutions become more comfortable with providing credit in the aquaculture industry. So Maroti, thank you very much for that question. And I hope I've been able to answer it. Then um, Amy Kayumba um, from Rwanda, I see uh, your question has been answered online as well by Mr. Jose. Um, Amy, you were wanting to know how to get involved and how support can be provided to aquaculture animal health in Rwanda. I see Jose has answered you and I'm sure when I share the email addresses, that contact can continue so that Rwanda can benefit from the aquatic animal health work that will be done in Truefish. Then if I carry on down the questions, um, I can read here, Kelfan Makera from Tanzania is writing, how can farmers be helped in business, especially in the in feeds, seeds, and farming. And uh, Kalfan, I can see you asking whether there's financial support. Um, the answer is much the same as I previously gave, that in Truefish, we are creating an environment where financiers become more comfortable with providing finance to aquaculture projects. Kalfan, if you take down my email at the end, I'm sure we can have a further discussion on how we can introduce you to various financial institutions. Then there's a question from Ezra. Ezra Bayakora uh, is asking, are you considering partnering with national institutions, particularly NAGRC and DB in species characterization and conservation for both wild and farmed because they already have such programs. Ezra, I'm going to ask uh, Papias, Dr. Papias to answer this. Uh, Papias, if you can open your microphone and just maybe provide a comment on the partnering with other national institutions. Papias, you can go ahead and comment on that. Uh, Mr. James, sorry, can you repeat the question, please? Uh, Papias, the question from Ezra, is are you considering partnering with national institutions in species characterization and conservation for both wild and farmed because there are other such programs? Oh, perfect. It's a very good question. Uh, this is really pertinent. I think this person who asked the question is really following up this issue and he's understanding the whole the, uh, all the dynamics we are going through. Yes, um, true fish, um, the component that is being spearheaded by World Fish is in partnership with the ESC research institutions. That is uh, NAFIRI, National Fisheries Resources Research Institute in Uganda. We have Kenya Marine Fisheries Resources Research Institute in, uh, in Kenya and Tanzania Fisheries Research Institute. 
So we are together and we are working together. And also as we come to capacity building, all of these institutions will benefit uh, in master into the project. Thank you, Mr. Tia. Over. Great, uh, great. Thank you very much, Papias. Um, Dr. Elisi, um, I'm going over to the questions that we've received from registration. Um, Dr. Elisi, Kerry Max from Global Affairs in Canada is asking how will the project integrate gender equality? Um, Dr. Elisi, can you perhaps comment on, on that gender matter? You come again? Uh, Dr. Elisi, um, Kerry Max from Canada is asking how will the project do gender equality? Um, Elisi, would you mind uh, providing a comment on that? Uh, yes, uh, there is a study that uh, uh, is going to be uh, implemented by What Are the Fish? On the gender in, uh, involvement of in a different uh, in different uh, component of of the project and also aquaculture uh, in general, uh, how the uh, how the project uh, can remove the impediment which prevent the uh, which prevent the uh, the gender uh, the female uh, or youth. Uh, to be involved in more activity uh, in aquaculture uh, in the region. I think uh, by the end of uh, the study, uh, uh, the challenges that prevent the gender to be involved in, in, in aquaculture will be uh, identified and uh, a proper solution will be uh, provided uh, through this project through FISH. I think maybe uh, um, uh, the, the biodiversity advisor can uh, add more about the gender study that uh, the project is going to be uh, implemented. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Elsie. Uh, perhaps I can see you. You've only, you want to comment on gender as well. I, I just want to uh, expound a little bit on the gender studies we are doing. It's not actually very comprehensive, but uh, basically the gender study we are doing is supposed to inform uh, the project implementers how the activities or the outcomes from the True Fish project are going to either affect uh, positively or negatively on the gender perspective or gender mainstreaming. And in this context, we are supposed actually to do this kind of work before we go deeper into the implementation of the, uh, the, 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 the project so that we can um, uh, beforehand understand this dynamics of gender so that we can inclusively consider everyone on board. Thank you, Mr. Etienne. Thank you, thank you, Papias. Um, I'm very proud. Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Anthony, you wanted to comment on, on gender also. Very good. Yeah, thank you very much, Etienne. I just wanted to uh, respond to my colleagues that in addition to what the study that is being conducted by the project, as has been put by the project coordinator and the implementer who is handling that component, already as in the design of the project, when we're writing out the project in it is, uh, the project document, there are areas where it has been already disaggregated according to uh, int various interest groups, including youth, including women, and must be taken care of. And this was evidenced when in an activity, as we are waiting for this study to be concluded, we still implement it according to what we sub subjected there, that now in case we have any activity that involves, you must always be sure that you are taking care of the, the, the gender issues, you must be taking care that there, is, there, are, there, there are females represented, there are youth, there are people with disabilities where possible, and we are sure, sure that this is also being done as we move. But when the study is now complete, we will just complement what efforts that are going on at this level of implementation. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Anthony. Um, I'm also very proud to say that uh, on our first, uh, 
study tour to Egypt, we are taking four women and four men to ensure that there's full gender representation. So it is an important component uh, of the True Fish project. I want to take some more of the questions that have been sent to us. While I take some of these questions, please feel free to raise your hand so that we can also try and take some live questions. If you want to ask something live, please raise your hand icon. And while that is going on, I want to read from the registration process. Mr. David Fincham from South Africa. David, nice to have you online. We haven't spoken for some time. David was asking what type of farming methods will be deployed? Um, what is the plan for supply of fingling stocks and farmers? And um, perhaps I can ask Jose. Jose, you are dealing with a training component. And my understanding is that the focus will be on viable aquaculture systems for, for East Africa. Jose, can you perhaps open your microphone and comment on that? Yeah, thank you, Tim. Yes, uh, the project is uh, mainly focused on production of uh, tilapia in cages and catfish. Uh, it is going to be mainly developed in, in ponds, right? Uh, we are not providing any kind of fingerlings to the farmers. What we are going is to review the training capacity that the institutions that I mentioned before are going to deliver and update their contents related to the provision of seeds, uh, fingerlings, etc. Yeah, in order to increase the capacity, not only of the operators, but also for those workers that the operators could uh, hire in the future. We are not going to provide any kind of financial support, direct financial support. We are not going to provide any kind of uh, direct supply to the farmers. So from an uh, FAO point of view, what we are going to do is to reinforce the training capacity. We are going to work also with the uh, national authorities and the operators looking for uh, enhancing the biosecurity, and also we would like to work with the countries in order to establish a sustainable management zoning system in the lake. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jose. Um, I hope that has answered you, uh, David, uh, around which uh, species and, and how the project will work around fingerlings. I can see there was a comment from Kelfan Makera. Thank you for that list. Uh, Kelfan, uh, please contact me and we can discuss the uh, various financial institutions. Um, you've indicated on your discussion that you're looking for a list of possible financiers, and uh, I look forward to having a discussion with you on that after the webinar. I see there are two hands up in the people wanting to ask live questions. I can see there are three hands. We will start with Maureen Nug. I think it's Nagrari. Maureen, I am now opening up your microphone. You are welcome to go ahead and ask your question live. Maureen, if you are ready to ask, I can see your microphone is still muted. If you can unmute and ask your question. All right, it doesn't seem that Maureen is there. Um, I want to move on to, I think it's uh, Nuruddin Tiamiu. Nuruddin, um, I have just opened your microphone. Nuruddin, you're welcome to ask your question. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Nuruddin. Yeah, I I'm glad that Truefish is trying to find a template for financiers our financial institution to lend fish farming concerns money because that is greater, one of the greatest challenge we have in Nigeria, for example. So I don't know how true fish and what fish on the West African um, coast, especially in Nigeria. Yes, Nuruddin, very good question. Um, so true fish at the moment is limited to, to South Africa. Um, we to open collaboration with, with Nigeria. One of our future study tours is looking at uh, collaborating with Nigeria. And because many of the financiers are global organizations, sure that have a discussion with uh, Nigerian farmers 
you share our challenges around financial access for fish farming. Um, Nuruddin, I hope that answers you. And uh, I look forward to continuing this discussion uh, after the webinar. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Nuruddin. Our next question is from Gasho Desta. Gasho, I have just opened up your microphone. You are welcome to unmute and uh, ask your question. Gasho, are you available to ask your question? All right, it doesn't seem that we have Gasho. Um, one of the questions that was posted to us through the registration, um, I just want to go down the list. Is employment creation part of your plans as you try to change the face of aquaculture? That was asked by Rosaline Kibogo from Kenya. So, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Dr. Ellisie, can I ask you to respond on this question? I will repeat the question. Is employment creation part of your plans as you try and change the face of aquaculture? Dr. Ellisie, can you comment on that? Okay, thank you, uh, Etienne, for uh, that question. I will, uh, I will respond a part of it, and then uh, another part will be responded by Mr. Jose, uh, uh, who is dealing with uh, capacity building. Uh, uh, on the, on in the project, we, we are going to train the people, and, and also after training them, we are going to uh, to put them on the um, on the practice in in, in, in um, on the practice to uh, to the uh, to different companies who are dealing with in, in, in issues with aquaculture uh, aqua, aquaculture. So uh, uh, by by giving them the internship uh, internship in different uh, aquaculture uh, uh, company. I think uh, by the end of the project, uh, those people will have uh, enough skill to uh, in, enough skill in aquaculture, and they probably they will be employed in those companies. Uh, maybe Jose can also uh, uh, elaborate more about the uh, about the internship. Yeah, right, thank, thank you, you LSE. Thank you, Jose. You can uh, proceed. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Lise. Yeah, that's a good question. Although we don't have, or we are not really looking for a direct increase of the employment with the, with the farmers, um, one of the things that the project is doing is identifying, as I said in my presentation, the needs, the, the, the technical needs that the operators uh, have on the lake. And we are trying to collaborate with the training institutions in order to um uh, the capacity of these institutions for providing skilled workers that are going to cope with these needs that we are identifying in the operators right by putting the offer and the demand uh in contact clearly we are going to increase the employment level it has been so far detected uh, 350 operators uh in a census that we ran at the very beginning of the project and at this census, we identified that uh, trained uh, or skilled workers, that it has been certified by specialized universities or institutions, are not uh, over 8%. And only 2% of these, uh, uh, 8, 10%, is coming from the participating institutions, which are the vocational training institutions uh, dealing with aquaculture training delivery, right? Our objective is that uh, at least by the end of the project, we are going to move from this 2% uh, to the 25%. So yes, we are going to uh, increase the creation of the farms. This is the what we could consider the uh, direct indicator of uh, related employment. But by re reinforcing the capacity of the operators in the different areas that we are working on in the project, 
um, looking for investments under the component that is implemented by uh, Landerland Mills uh, under the coordination of UOTM. Uh, by securing that the biodiversity of the lake is not going to be affected uh, under World Fish Center and Dr. Papius Morgan, trying to enhance the biosecurity of the lake, trying to uh, establish a sustainable management system, and finally, trying to reinforce the capacity, the technical capacity of the institutions uh, delivering uh, workers and uh, engaging these workers on the, the private sector. Uh, we firmly believe that the farms are going to be secured, the future of the farms and the future of the operators are going to be reinforced, which is going to contribute for the generation of employment, but also is going to contribute to preserve and to keep all the employment that is already ongoing. In this uh, increase of the employment, the project is also looking very carefully for gender balance. So we would like to see a more balance in the gender employment in the future. We would like to uh, increase the number of women participating in the different levels of um, the farming in the in the Lake Victoria fishery basin. So yes, the project is going to contribute for the creation of employment and is going to contribute for the maintenance of the current employment. Thank you, Robert. Uh, yes, please, please, uh, Dr. Anthony. Yeah, thank you very much, Etienne, and thank you for the one who asked about the question of employment. As has been summarized by, 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 by Jose and Elise, actually the focus of the project is employment, as in a way to say. To start with, the first component is about businesses. There's nothing you can do in business apart from getting income and getting employment to the people and going on. The second component talks about skills. We develop skills so that people can be employed, people can earn a living and can, can be able to do it to survive in, in the future. And the last component is talking sustainability. When you talk sustainability, you are talking about to, uh, to, uh, having resources for use now and for use in the future. And when you, you have resources for use in the future, you are, you, are, you are aiming at employing people now and employing people in the future. So it is all about that. It cuts across through all the components. I submit. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Anthony. Um, Jose, I'm, I'm once again going to come back to you for a question by, it's Jules Braille Elim. Um, Jules is asking how significant is the use of new technologies applied on advancing aquaculture? Jose, can you comment on the use of new technology? Yes, thank you, Etienne. Uh, well, through the assessment of the needs of the operators on the lake, one of the things that we were uh, checking on them is what are the kind of new technologies, uh, A, that they are already using, and B, that they would like to use in the future. So what is the aquaculture technologies that they are in need in order to, to implement in the different businesses. Um, we have identified uh, some of these technologies. Uh, I don't know, what do you mean by, by new? Uh, maybe they are new by the, by the area for, for the region. Um, and uh, we are uh, working with the training institutions in order to reinforce the technical capacity of these institutions for delivering or increasing the capacity of the workers in those new technologies that are demanded or technologies that are demanded by the aquaculture operators. So uh, we could say, yes, we are going to work on updating the institutions and trying to provide the skilled workers that are going to be able to be working and implementing new technology technologies in the farms. Thank you very much, Jose, for that clarity. Um, I cannot see any new hands being raised. If anybody does want to ask a question live, I do still have some questions from the registration process. We have dealt with many of them. I see uh, Sadiki Mohammed from Morocco is asking around a marketing strategy. I think Sadiki Truefish in its full component of business development will certainly be looking at the marketing of aquaculture projects or products as well, not only in the region, but within countries in the region between countries and uh, internationally. Um, Rosalind, thank you also for your question on employment uh, that you sent with the registration. 
Uh, very helpful that uh, we had all of the panelists here to contribute to that. Then a question from one of the fish farms, Yalelo. Uh, the question was sent by Tibu, Tibul Yakoya, and I think the first name is Esther. Um, Esther is asking, what are the best biosecurity measures to take to control infections in a hatchery? Um, I promised that I wouldn't go into technical issues in this webinar, but perhaps, um, perhaps again, sorry, Jose, for pressing on your button again, but perhaps you can just repeat, Jose, how will the project reach out to, to other countries to improve their biosecurity measures? Yeah, thank you, Tim. Well, there is a approach that FAO is applying is uh, what we call is uh, summary moving towards an improved uh, biosecurity status in the countries. We are looking for uh, 18 different areas, but summarizing, we need to determine what is the list of uh, pathogens uh, that are present in the nation, but also at the regional level. We are identifying also diagnostics uh, related to this disease. We are uh, increasing the capacity of the countries uh, by providing technical capacity, but also providing equipment for making uh, samples. Uh, we are establishing pilots in order to develop uh, these uh, file emissions for sampling. We are uh, helping the countries in order to identify the results of the samples. And then uh, we like also to establish early warning systems. We are developing two levels of training, uh, more uh, in deep training for those bodies uh, belonging to the different administrations that are concerned with aquatic animal health. And also we are going to provide a more uh, basic level to the farms operators in order to increase the measures that they are adopting on the lake. For example, so far, based on our uh, assessments, we detected that most operators, the only measure that they have into place is to wash the hands for those that are, that are entering in the, in, the, in the facilities, which clearly is not enough. Uh, uh, most of them, they don't have even idea how to uh, detect uh, early detection of diseases, so what is the kind of diseases, how to act in the case that uh, a disease is uh, appearing on the on the farm. All these capacities are going to be increased uh, in both levels, uh, as I said, a more uh, high level in, in the body concerns, in the national bodies concerns with uh, controlling uh, and doing the surveillance for aquatic animal health, and a more basic level, but uh, enough for uh, launching alarms and for uh, implementing early warning system with operators. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Jose, for that clarity. We do have uh, just over 10 minutes left. I still want to make some announcements. And then after I've made some announcements, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Anthony to give some closing remarks. Um, so if you can just bear with me while I share my screen uh, to just give you some announcements. Our next webinar in two weeks from now, on the 3rd of March, will be dealing with prospects for aquaculture development in Africa, looking at a review of past performance to assess future potential. Um, many of you will know uh, John Walakira in Uganda. He will be joining me on that panel together with other panel members to discuss a recent uh, paper that was published uh, around the aspects of historical performance in aquaculture in Africa and whether we can learn lessons uh, from that. We've also got webinars coming up on vaccines, more on tilapia. So please watch out for various announcements. Um, if you are on our email database, you will get that on email or you can watch the various social media channels as well to get those announcements. Um, I'd like to go back to Dr. Anthony. Um, Dr. Anthony has been sitting patiently through this webinar. He is a fierce supporter of the True Fish Project. And um, Dr. Anthony, can I give you the floor for a few minutes to give us some closing remarks before we close off the session today? Thank you very much, Etienne, and thank you, colleagues who have actually also sat in throughout this. I take this opportunity on behalf of the Lake Victoria Fisheries Organization that hosts this project, and on my own behalf, to thank all of you 
most honestly, all the people who have sat in this, uh, who have contributed in one way or the other through chat, through questions, through contributions, even your appreciations I've seen, I've been following the chats here and I've seen a lot. Your time that you have spent with us here, we do not take it for granted. We really appreciate. I appreciate uh, the Aquaculture Africa Magazine for organizing this web, uh, webinar and above all, the World Fish Center, the uh, Scratching and, Yoga, uh, and, and World Initiative for, for soy meal, uh, soy, soy meal resource into human health for supporting it and actually uh, 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 funding it. This is very important. I take this time now to inform you that as you have seen in the beginning, we're informed that the production of, our, uh, of, of our culture, especially in the region where we are, is quite very low. And that is also commensurate with the consumption where people are still consuming seven kilograms per, per person per annum. It is really a very low average. And the only way we can no longer, we have thought and thought and find that we can no longer expand this through capture fisheries and aquaculture is the real source. Because with aquaculture, we have an open check. We can fill in all that we want and be able to produce as long as we are sure of the issues of sustainability. I want to inform you that this project, the True Fish Project, is one of the few projects that have been part and parcel, which I feel was carefully sought out and the implementation, implementers carefully selected. You have looked at the three uh, 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 institutions that are implementing the Food and Agriculture uh, Organization of the United Nations, the, uh, the Landel Mills uh, from uh, their headquarters way back, way in, 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 the, in the Northern Hemisphere, and then the Wild Fish Center. All these are companies that are credible and we feel they are act, act hands on. We, we really benefit this project, and the project should really see results coming out. I will, for emphasis, uh, encourage the implementers. We have been here and we have actually now played in the, uh, uh, the, the game. So the ball is now back into your court. You have so thrown to the world, informed the, all the people who have been listening in carefully uh, what you intend to do on this project, how you are going to implement it, and how the ideas are going to move. And from what I've seen in the chat, people have really appreciated what you have planned. It is now incumbent upon you to ensure that you deliver on, 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 on this project. I want also to implore the organizers of College Africa Magazine and, the, and your supporters, and the TN in particular who hosted this, to think of a possibility of having this kind of event somewhere again, at least towards when you have implemented, to do some kind of measurement of the midterm progress of the project. And if possible, towards the end, to see now the deliverables, what is it that we have been able to uh, obtain as the project. Meanwhile, I want to uh, encourage, particularly the implement of, of uh, component one, ETNE, to ensure that you know the issues of businesses. And now under businesses, you have planned very good things, including uh, aquaculture conferences, which brings around people to know each other, uh, business to business visits, then uh, linking uh, aquaculture institutions to, to finances, which you have seen from all questions coming of interest, they find that that has been a very big challenge that you really uh, turn the scope and then we see what, what, what happens at the end of the project. And I know, I trust and believe in you that you will be able to deliver that. To my colleagues of FAO and your team in the backyard, uh, you know very well the importance of skills. In anything that you want to implement, you really need the skilled skill. Anything that you want to do, at, even people who are now advertising for jobs, they will always begin by the skill and the key competences. These are really important. And now you are touching on areas of zoning and issues of biosecurity. When you want to look at uh, aquatic animal health, we really know that the future, anything can happen. Today, the world has been brought to it or, or to its knees because of a smaller thing called the coronavirus. So if such a small, a, a small thing also uh, attacked our aquatic environment, we are really doomed. So we need to, uh, to, to see that through this project, you are able to prepare the East African people in uh, facing that. Finally, to my colleagues of uh, World Fish Center, issues of biodiversity are very important. 
And when it comes, when I, when I have just talked, when I was answering the question of, 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 of uh, the question of, 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 of providing employment, we really look at biodiversity to ensure that the future in aquatic systems is sustainable. And if you do what you implement uh, your activities, as you have said, I think the future is very bright. Finally, colleagues, I once again want to thank all those who have contributed to this uh, uh, webinar and those who have attended both physically and even those who have attended morally because at registration, I know we went up to around uh, 300, but uh, as I was checking on our list here, we came close to 100 and some are also listening probably in the 201 on, on one, one computer. So more, num more, more numbers are like to have accrued there. I once again, thank you all. And I say all this uh, on behalf of the organization, the project and the East African community, one people, one destiny. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Anthony, for those closing words. We will certainly uh, do more webinars about true fish in the future. Uh, Philip Borrell, thank you for your references in the chat panel. We will certainly look at them. <clears throat> I can remind you that this webinar has been recorded. So you're welcome to uh, get the link for the recording. It will be in your email by tomorrow. I am going to close off this afternoon asking all of our panel members, you can open up your camera and, and wave to the audience. And then lastly, I will be putting up the email addresses for everybody. And I will leave the email addresses up for a few minutes. Thank you very much and have a great day wherever you are. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One people, one destiny. One people, one destiny. <laughs> this is your political party anthem. <laughs> no, that is East African community. <laughs> it's a good one, actually. Yes. Thank you for attending. Thank you for attending. I did Thank you very much, Pepe. To be here for all this time. Okay, thanks. Bye.